Hello everyone, my name is Tequila. Welcome to my channel and my first tech video. Today you will see how I repaste my laptop with liquid metal. Attention, big disclaimer, I'm not a professional IT specialist and I will not be responsible for any damage you may cause to your laptop if you decide to do what I've done to my laptop. Using conductive liquid metal in a laptop is extremely dangerous as you can short something and therefore you can easily destroy or damage your machine. Besides that, you will very likely lose your warranty if you decide to repaste your laptop, definitely when using liquid metal. So my video is absolutely no recommendation for you to do the same what I have done. That being said, just let's get started. My laptop is a XMG Neo 17 E21 with a 5900H XM CPU and a NVIDIA RTX 3080 mobile GPU. What we will see in this video are pictures from a treatment of the laptop and pictures from two benchmarks which I performed before and after the repasting. The first benchmark is Cinebench R20 and the second benchmark is TimeSpy from 3D Mark. Additionally, you will see some screenshots of HW Info 64 which I used to check the clock speeds and temperatures before and after the liquid metal repasting. As you can see, after the Cinebench R20 run, we had a score of 5165 points. In HW Info 64, we had a readout of the clock speeds, which a maximum of 4.57 GHz on only one core. The maximum temperature of the CPU was 95.5 degrees Celsius, which is 0.5 degrees over the maximum I set in the XMG control center. So you can imagine that thermal throttling occurred. Maximum CPU package power was 83 watts. As a second benchmark, I used TimeSpy from 3D Mark. We achieved a graphics score of 13,305 points and a CPU score of 10,049 uh, points. Max temperature for the CPU was uh, 96.74 degrees Celsius, which was 1.74 degrees over the limit I set in the XMG control center. So what can be seen by that number is that the CPU test of the time spy, the CPU was clearly pushed to its thermal limits and of course was thermal throttled. The GPU maxed out with the standard thermal paste at 77.22 degrees Celsius, which is absolutely uncritical. And now the real fun begins. On the next picture you can see what I've used to repaste my laptop. Special precision tools, magnetic mat for storing the screws, paper towels, q-tips, isopropyl alcohol for cleaning, heat resistant masking tape, electrical isolation tape, autosol polishing paste, thermal grizzly shield heat resistant paint, thermal grizzly conducting out liquid metal, a big soft towel to work on and of course my trusty reading glasses. Fun fact, the Thermal Grizzly Shield paint is so red because the porn actress Mary Fox was the girlfriend of one of the developers of the paint during that time and she wanted it that red. So first things first, we have to take the laptop apart. For the Neo, this is pretty straightforward. All screws of the back plate are the same. After the screws are out, you got to pry a bit, but it is not too complicated to open the laptop. After that, you got to unplug the battery connection. This is extremely important. After that, press the start button to be sure that all power is gone out of the system. To get more space, I took the system SSD out as well. Both fans of the heatsink as well needs to be unplugged, of course. Yeah. <laughs> 
In my Neo 17 there were two tapes holding back the heatsink. Lose it or get rid of it. I guess it's a warranty seal. It's broken, so it's worthless now. They are here and here. Now to the main course. Unscrew the heatsink. Be careful, the screws have different colored springs, which means they most likely got different tension as well. Three different types in my case. I stored them on my magnetic board in the same pattern as they have to be screwed back. Then I took off the heatsink extremely carefully. Do not bend the heat pipes. They can be damaged easily and you may need a new heatsink. So be very gentle with it. Here the heatsink is off and you can see the CPU, the smaller die on the left, and the GPU, the bigger die on the right side. And you can see the old thermal paste, which seems to be Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. XMG uses high quality stuff. And here is the heatsink with the fans attached to it. Now the cleaning begins to get rid of the old thermal paste. CPU looked good, but there was a black tape around it. I took it off. Underneath was more thermal paste that needed to be removed and pins that desperately needed to be protected against shortening before applying liquid metal. Here is everything cleaned up properly for my taste. Now I needed to apply Thermal Grizzly Shield to prevent shortening the pins around the CPU and the GPU if liquid metal spills out a bit. Here Tigi Shield is applied. Three layers to be precise. One is definitely too thin for my taste. Two seem to be okay, one more just for good measure. I also painted the surrounding of the CPU and even put some heat resistant masking tape around it. Better safe than sorry. Then I polished the copper of the heatsink where CPU and GPU contact it to a mirrored finish with Autosol. It is a great polishing cream, which we also used for the brass and the chrome parts of our boat back in the days when I served the German Navy. This stuff is magic, as you might see. Then I cut out two pieces of paper in the exact size of the CPU and GPU dies. I placed them on the dies and attached teaser tape loops on the side which faces the heatsink. I carefully put the heatsink on and took it off again. And et voila! I had the exact positions where the contact between the dies and the heatsink takes place. So I could spread out the liquid metal extremely precise. You want as less liquid metal in your laptop as possible, believe me. I mask the positions with black electrical tape. It's very sturdy. Then I peel the two pieces of paper off and now I had the exact positions for applying the liquid metal. Pro tip, not for me to be honest. Don't apply the liquid metal directly on the dies of the laptop. You can easily spill it on your laptop if the syringe stutters or you may press too hard. Put some liquid metal securely in a plastic cap instead. I use the cap from the isopropanol for example. Then take a Q-tip and dip it in the liquid metal and then apply it with the Q-tip to the dies. Much safer way than fiddling around with the syringe full of liquid metal over your open laptop. I applied two layers of liquid metal on the heatsink. The first layer was very thin and I let it dry for approximately 45 minutes until the surface became a bit dull so the liquid metal started to dry out. I had seen this as a professional tip on YouTube as well. This gives the copper a bit more liquid metal to soak in before you reassemble the machine. Then. I applied the second layer of liquid metal to the heatsink. Direct afterwards, I also applied liquid metal on the CPU and GPU dies. You have to rub a bit before the surface structure of the liquid metal breaks and you got an even surface. This takes a while. Then I reassembled the laptop carefully. Make sure to reattach the spring-loaded screws in the right order and do not over-tension them. 
put everything back together and don't forget to plug the fans and the battery back in again. Now comes the moment of truth. Will it start? And yes, it did. Benchmark time. First, time spy. 13384 graphics score after 13305 without liquid metal. Little increase of 0.6%. And 10,107 CPU score after 10,049 without liquid metal, increase of 0.6%. Max temperature of the GPU 74.4 degrees Celsius after 77.2 without liquid metal, so approximately 3 degrees cooler, which is not much. But the GPU was relatively calm without liquid metal as well. Max temperature of the CPU was 86.7 degrees Celsius after 96.7 degrees without liquid metal. So 10 degrees cooler. Yes, baby, I'll take it. But that is not the whole truth as the CPU clocks faster and produces a slightly higher score, even if the gain is much less than I had expected. We will see this in a second. That brings us to our next comparison in Cinebench R20. Score is now 5246 after 5168 without liquid metal. An increase of 78 points or 1.5%. This again is much less than I had expected. So the conclusion is that the cooling solution of the Neo 17 has to be quite capable, even if the CPU got throttled a bit. The throttling might got a bigger impact if you run heavy workloads for a longer time. But now there was no thermal throttling. Max temperature of the CPU was 82.5 degrees Celsius after 95 degrees Celsius without liquid metal. So approximately 12.5 degrees cooler. This is insane. Besides that, two cores clocked at 4.65 GHz and two cores at 4.62 GHz. Without liquid metal, only one core reached 4.56 GHz. The rest clocked slower. I mean, this speaks for itself. So it is quite evident that the clock speeds were higher after the treatment, although the CPU runs much cooler without any throttling. CPU max package power stayed the same at 83 watts in both runs. So what do we learn from all this? What are the conclusions? Would I recommend liquid metal to use in a laptop? Well, difficult one. On the one hand, you got much better temperatures for your CPU and prevent the system from thermal throttling, which could lead to much better performance if your laptop's cooling solution is not as good as from the XMG Neo, for example, and you regularly experience thermal throttling. On the other hand, changing the thermal compound to liquid metal in a laptop that is not made for this is extremely dangerous. You can easily destroy the whole laptop if you short something and you will definitely lose your warranty. Besides that, you can only do this if the heatsink is made out of copper or nickel-plated copper. Aluminum will be destroyed in a very short while when getting in contact with liquid metal. In addition to that, you have to repeat the liquid metal treatment a couple of times as the liquid metal will be soaked in the copper over some time and the temperatures will get worse again. But the absorption process slows down each time you apply new liquid metal. So this is only a thing for specialists who exactly know what they are doing and who exactly know the risks and want to take it. So don't try this at home. Nowadays I only use liquid metal on the CPU as the GPU does not benefit from the liquid metal too much. Just 2 degrees is not really noticeable and the GPU was quite cool before the liquid metal as well. It simply does not need it as there is no thermal throttling on the GPU in my case. So what I recommend it. If you not exactly know what you're doing, no, hell no, don't do it, stop it. But would I do it again? 
um, I'm afraid yes. The rest is up to you, whatever you do. I'm not responsible for any damage you might create. So that's it for today's video. Please like, subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section down below. I would love to hear about your thoughts and about the experiences with Liquid Muddle. My name is Tequila. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.